Lesson eight, keeping track of what you eat, food logging made easy. As I mentioned at the end of lesson seven, the way scale, the food way scale can be very helpful when you're learning about foods and quantities and serving sizes and reading nutrition labels, but it can also feel like I have to do it. So I don't want you to feel like you have to go out and buy a food scale. You do not have to. And I just want you to be aware of that, that in general, the recommendations I have, I'm not expecting you to go and spend a lot of money on this diet. This quote was a great one I found. John Maxwell, small disciplines repeated with consistency every day lead to great achievements gained slowly over time. Every day, this consistency part, I've talked about in those other lessons where we do something every day, we create a habit, we have goals, we have charts, we do it every single day and we can measure it. This is similar to that where it's the consistency of every day, we get the achievement slowly over time. Slowly is a key word. This is a slow diet. This is not getting you to lose your weight fast. This is really slow, but eventually you get there. Three helpful tips. You do not need to write down the calories and carbs or amounts when you're doing your food logging. If you plateau during your weight loss journey, you can bring back this tool and do three days again. This is a great way to be mindful of what you're eating and drinking. I'm going to go straight into the bonus because that's where I'm going to explain this. Daily food journal. Tracking your meals can help with weight loss. This did help me with weight loss. I give a little explanation like I do in the other bonuses. And this is what it looks like when you would print it out. I did not have this sheet myself. I just had a little journal book and you don't have to print this off. This is the recommendation that if you want to print it off, you can. But I just had a little booklet and I used it for about a week at a time. And I did it over around two months and I would do a week on, week off sometimes. But I even recommend just three days and it's very eye-opening really, really eye-opening to see what you're eating. Now I'm gonna explain it a little bit here. You enter the date at the top. Now you're gonna write down the types of food you eat and drink during the day. Not just the food, but also write down what you drink. So this is an example. We've got cereal, coffee, granola bar, two of them, protein bar, energy drink, coffee with cream and sugar, a muffin with juice, hamburger, fries, donuts from that original typical day that I talked about in the last lesson and then steak and vegetables, salad and a dessert, bowl of chips, apple, protein bar, energy drink. Now it seems like a lot of food, but back then I ate a lot of food. This might be a little bit exaggerating. I might not have eaten all of that, but I did eat a lot more food back then. And so you just write the titles, the title of the food. When I was doing this and losing weight, I would just write vegetables, salad, chicken, you know, when I was trying the low carb and the keto, the main food items, and I was just very aware of it. And when I'm writing it down, and then I'm gonna go and get my donut, I think, oh, I gotta be accountable to myself. I gotta be responsible to write that down. I'm not as likely, because I'm gonna do this, and this was a discipline to learn how to be aware of what I was gonna eat. And I knew I didn't have to do this long term. Now, there are apps that you can get on your phone. I like the visuals. If you listen to some financial planners, they talk about having a jar and you put your cash in the jar. There's a reason for having the visuals. When our society has switched so much and we have everything on our phones, we have all of our money on a card, it doesn't have the same seriousness as actually taking a pen, writing it down, you know, that physical act of writing down the food that you have eaten, that physical act has a lot more power than just on your phone. So I'm not ditching the apps. They might help and maybe when you're out at work and you go out for a meal, you can just put it on your phone app at that point. When you come home, put it in your journal, put it on the piece of paper. That's another way to log it if you're traveling or if you're at work. So this is just the steps here. So step one, enter the date, print off a couple pages so you can do three or four days at a time don't have to do this long term. It's just to make you more aware of it. Number two would be enter the types of food that you eat and drink during the day. You do not need to write down the calories or carbs or quantities. If you plateau during your weight loss journey, you can bring back this tool 
and do it for three days again. This is a great way to be mindful of what you're eating and drinking. I'll still do this in the last two and a half years. I've still done this a few times when I catch myself being tempted to snack on things or somebody else in the family brings foods home and I'm going, okay, I can't stop. This is one of the tools. I've got lots of tools for you. This is one tool that you can say, okay, this tool I'm gonna use and it's gonna help me or combine a couple tools. Use a lot of tools when you're losing the weight. Once you are maintaining the weight, you can still bring back some of the tools and they work. They really do work. This is the color version and then this is the grayscale version. Just print off a couple of these, start writing down for say three days or four days in a row, write down what you eat on those days and it will probably shock you. Don't feel shame. Do not feel embarrassed about what you write down. Just be honest. Just write it down. Say, I had that bag of chips. I had those crackers at 10 o'clock at night. I had double double coffee with cream and sugar. I had that. That's okay. I'm just going to write it down and be aware of it. And then the next time you do it, you might think, ah, oh, I got to write this down. I want this to work so bad that I'm going to have this tool where I'm accountable to myself and I'm having to write it down. I'm going to stop myself from eating it because I don't want to have to write it down. I don't want to have to hold myself accountable for that donut. So I'm just not going to have that donut. This would never work on its own to change somebody's lifestyle. Well, it's a whole bunch of things that you have to put together and all of these pieces of the puzzle. It's a lot of different things and some work some days better than others. And you just keep pulling and you keep pulling from this treasure chest of tools and ideas and things that will work and eventually you make it and it's okay to start this food journaling and stop it and then bring it back in three weeks and try it again and it's finding what's going to work for you and this might be one of those things that works really well for you we're almost done the preview of these nine snacks we're getting closer to module four and so let's see what this one is. Popcorn. How can popcorn have sugar in it? That doesn't make sense. That's not logical. That's what I used to think. Two lessons away and we're going to be talking about these snacks in lesson 10, 11, 12 and how much sugar is in each of them. We're going on to lesson nine next where I'm going to show some of the downsides of what has been talked about lately with intermittent fasting and also how to schedule your meals more than scheduling your intermittent fasting times. So I'll see you in lesson nine.